from Goodman Diamond on the campus of the University of Wisconsin-Madison, welcome back to the 2024 WIA State Girls Softball Championships. It's the Division I final. The fourth-seeded Milton Redhawks against the second seed, the Kenosha Bradford Red Devils. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us from Madison, along with Bill Brophy. I'm Jay Wilson. Well, Brof, Kenosha Bradford, Milton, somebody's going to win the school's first state title tonight. And it should be pitching, which is probably going to be the focus of whoever wins. We've seen great pitching from these teams in the first two days. Gwen Baker of Milton set a record with 18 strikeouts on day one. Milton won in 12 innings. And then last night, they ended Kikana's 108-game winning streak with a 5-3 win scoring three in the seventh inning. Meanwhile, Kenosha Bradford hasn't allowed a run, only six hits in two games. You'll see Aubrey Strelo, one of a pitching tandem that has been outstanding, take the, the mound against uh, Baker in what should be a, a great pitcher's duel. As you can see, the lineups are being introduced to the crowd. We'll have first pitch and the start of the Division One final in just a moment. But first, a message from our statewide sponsors. This is your WIAA Network Station. That is jam-packed, the Milton cheering section. Good crowd supporting Kenosha Bradford. There's the Red Devil. Good evening, sir. Nice cape. Let's go to the Menards keys to the game. Brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Go for what you got. Well, we talked about the topic. Gwen Baker has been a pitching sensation for Milton. Set the Division One record with 18 strikeouts and a 2-1 win over New Richmond. On Thursday night and then last night, she was in the circle when Milton Brooke and Connisard handled their first loss since May of 2021. Baker allowed eight hits, three runs last night in a 5-3 Milton win over Kakana. Meanwhile, the pair of Brooklyn Danielson and Aubrey Stralo have only allowed six hits and no runs. Stralo gets the, the nod in the circle tonight. She threw a complete game on opening day against Cedarburg. All right, Milton leads off with second baseman Kylie Reed. Then Ella Knoble and Kenzie Marquardt, the first three scheduled to face Aubrey Strilo. Reed, a 389 hitter on the season, trying to set the table for the Milton Red Hawks. Missed with that one, two and one. This is Milton's fourth trip to the state softball tournament, their second trip in the last three seasons. In 2022, Milton was eliminated in the quarterfinals against Sun Prairie. Milton just had two hits in the game. Then sophomore pitcher Gwen Baker was touched up for five runs. Well, experience has only improved Gwen Baker, and she is one of the best in the state. As a team, Milton hits 309 collectively. They've only hit one home run collectively. That one's fouled off of Reed. But they find ways to win. A lot of it has to do with what Baker does in the circle and the way they play defense. There is the starting lineup brought to you by Rural Mutual Insurance Company. Premiums paid here, stay here to keep Wisconsin strong. Two of those hitters uh, have averages over 400. They're Mark Quarton and Mazzara. And Reed goes down on strikes to start the game. First base in. At the uh, outside corner, they'll get the strikeout to start the game. Aubrey Strelo's numbers. Again, they've been enhanced by a four-hit shutout against Cedarburg on day one. She threw two innings to lock down the victory against Watertown. Didn't allow a hit yesterday. Here's Ella Knoble, the Milton Red Hawks first baseman. Just underway here, Division One. Again, we're delayed earlier this afternoon for an hour and 17 minutes by a lots of rain. They did a great job getting this field back in shape. We resumed after that and completed the Division Three and Four, or two and three championships, I should say. And now we're deciding it in Division One to wrap up a great week of softball here at Goodman Diamond in Madison. One and two, the count to Canova. Bounce to second. Brooklyn Danielson couldn't handle the short hop. And that's the first runner of the game for Milton. See how they rule this. Danielson doesn't play it real well. 
pops up in her chest and she uh, can't play the ball when it gets in front of her. They call that an error four. And it does give Milton its first base runner. Kenzie Marquardt steps in. What an offensive year she's had. 463, 21 runs batted in. First pitch from Stralo misses. Ball one. Milton, the champions of the Badger Conference Large Division, 12 and 2 record. The Badger Large had four teams in Division I sectional championship games. Milton and Watertown made it here to state this week. Mark Court has 10 doubles out of his or 31 hits. There's the coach of Milton. That's Kurt Mussey. Fourth season in charge at Milton. Co-coach of the year this year in the Badger Large with Beaver Dam's Abby Schmidt. Kurt Mussey also a volunteer assistant coach with the UW Whitewater softball program. He loves this sport. Put some signs on out there to the base runner. That one taken. Throw back to first. Back in time is the runner. Parker, the catcher, letting Canable know she's out there. Milton has stolen 45 bases in 48 attempts this year. So about two a game. Last pitch was called a strike. So two and two. There's a hot shot foul just outside the third base line. Off speed delivery and Marquardt hooked it down in the corner, but just foul. Boy, that had a great sound off the bat. Stralo now the 2 2 count. 200 feet down each line here at the Wisconsin Badgers. Goodman Diamond. Fouled off of Marquardt, so it stays two and two. The wind was howling the first two days. Let's settle down. Cool. There's nothing right there. Yeah, that's okay. Beautiful night. Temperature in the low 60s. Oh, just a little breeze blowing the uh, flags we have the third base now. But, uh, yeah, that's always better. conflicting winds. Yeah, here. that's right. Huh? All right, another 2 2 coming to Marquardt. A little high, full count. We well, should try to get her to go up the ladder and no go. 218 of the power alleys here in Goodman Diamond. There you see. Still that. takes a good poke with or without the wind to get one out of here. Jenna Breeze blowing up Wisconsin Pinnacle on the third base side. Here comes the payoff pitch. Good take, ball four. Marquardt stops by the on deck circle to advise Jenna Benish what she thinks of the offerings of Stralo after coaxing the lock. We'll get a courtesy runner for the catcher. Everybody's looking to the dugout to see who that's going to be. The infielder's coming in to calm Stralo down after the walk. The coach first is, base coach wants yeah. to know who the courtesy runner is going to be. And then I think uh, Kurt Mussey said 17, if I saw his lips correctly. Yeah, he did. You're a good flip reader. <laughs> well. Kylie Butchen. Courtesy runner at first base for the Milton Red Hawks catcher Kenzie Marquardt and number 17, Kylie Butchen. Butchen, the first Jesus runner at first freshman. base for Milton. Now batting, center fielder Jenna Bina. All right, back to the plate. Jenna Binesh, the center fielder. Big swing and a miss. Second team all conference this year, also three years on varsity basketball. So many multi sport athletes we see every year here at the state softball tournament. One strike pitch. Wild quickly 0 and 2. A little gap in right center field. Jenna had the big hit against Kikano last night in the three run seventh. It was her two run single with the bases loaded, which turned a Kikano lead into a deficit. That one missed one and two. Yeah, that's a result that sent shockwaves through the Wisconsin softball community, that's for sure. Again, Kikano, three time champion. Hadn't lost since May of 2021. That's right, May of 2021. They were just 
four wins away from tying the all-time national high school record of 112. Oh, that's something Milton will hang their hats on forever. They were the team that did it. And again, they did it with a three-run, two-out rally, thanks to the woman in the box right here. Swinging, strike three, two down. Big out for Aubrey Stralo. Left fielder. Here's the left Molly fielder, Baker. Molly Baker. Molly Baker had the bases loaded game winning single on Thursday to beat New Richmond. Yeah, they've, had, they've had a few heroes, different ones at that. This will be the 25th pitch of the inning for Aubrey Stralo. Trying to get out of a bit of a jam here with runners in first and second, now two outs. This is to short. And that's going to be Morgan Smith taking it herself. And that will retire Milton. And that's the end of the inning. Now a message from your local station. This is your WIAA network station. Milton had two runners and an error and a walk in the first inning, but did not score. Here comes Kenosha Bradford. And here are your starting lineups. Brought to you by Rural Mutual Insurance Company. Premiums paid here. Stay here to keep Wisconsin strong. There's how the Red Devils line up for their head coach, John Ruffalo. His 21st season in charge at Kenosha Bradford. Also the athletic director at Bradford High School. As a team, Bradford hits 330. Hit 12 home runs. And primarily, they, they do it with pitching. Right? Their pitching tandem one is also a third pitcher. Madeline Strail that's been used sparingly has an ERA of 1.06 and compiling a 26 and 3 record. So this is Aubrey Strelo and she'll loop a single to left field. Good start for the first for the Red Devils. Strelo starts it with a hit. You know, just six her bat out and serves it in the left field over the shortstop's head. Center fielder, Celia May. Served it up. Didn't even find green, but it's a hit. So, here's come Celia May. She was hitting fourth earlier this week. Today, she's moved up to the number two position. Tried to bunt. As Kenosha Bradford figures, well, there might not be a whole lot of runs scored in this game, so they're thinking small early. Probably not a bad idea. They've successfully bunted 21 times in 27 games this year. So small ball is not necessarily their game. They've stolen 77 bases in 90 attempts. One strike pitch. And it gets by the catcher, Kenzie Marquardt. So that sends Stralo down to second. Now well, better than the sacrifice. Yeah. See what happened here. Pitch up out of the zone. Right in the glove. And the, the bat might have been a little bit of a screen. Didn't hit it. Another bunt. Ooh, that hit hurt. Was that out of the box or not? Looked like it to me. Yep. Yep. So, May is called out for being hit by the batted ball outside of the box. Another look. Thomas Hack, a little, little, little bit of a delay call, but clearly got it right. She was clearly out of the box when the ball hit her. Thomas Hack kept us waiting a bit, but finally called out. So Stralo stays at second, and now it goes to Angela Parker, the Kenosha Bradford catcher. Big cut, foul ball. If you're thinking, boy, that Gwen Baker looks like an imposing figure in the circle. She's listed at six feet two inches. Boy, I thought you saw her, I saw her downstairs. Yeah, yeah. Oof. Well, bro, if you know what you know what program heights are like. <laughs> Here comes Parker. That one just missed the outside. Baker gonna is committed to pitch at Butler next year. So she'll be competing in Division One. Another foul. One and two. 
and some of the numbers on Gwen Baker this season. That's pretty good stuff. And she's followed that up. And again, set a record with 18 strikeouts, about eight hits and one run against New Richmond on Thursday. And then beat Kakano last night, about eight hits and three runs against the Galpin Ghosts. Parker lines one to second. Look out. Double play. Reed with the catch. Mesro with the touch at the bag. It's a double play that ends the inning. Great awareness here by Mazzara. But she saw that Reed was going to make the catch. She snuck back to second before the base runner to double it up and end the first inning. Another look at that double play that ends the first for Milton. Now a message from your local station. This is your WIAA network station. The 2024 WIAA Softball Championships are brought to you by Rural Mutual Insurance Company. Premiums paid here stay here to keep Wisconsin strong. A proud sponsor of the WIAA Rural Mutual Insurance Sportsmanship Award for over 50 years. Boy, once we got the rain out of here, it's turned into a beautiful evening. Not a cloud in the sky as the sun sets on Goodman Diamond and the lights take effect. Temperature is in the low 60s. Perfect night for softball. Sure is. Here's Sophie Mesra, the shortstop from Milton. She'll lead off, followed by Trinity Harris and Lyndon Briggs. A half-hearted swing there will cost her, and it's one and one. We've seen three first-time winners already today. In fact, the only team that had ever won a state title prior to today that won again was in Division 5, where Pichelli beat Oakfield 4-3, to three, then Fall Creek shut out Cuba City 7-0. Prescott beat Laconia 3-1 to one in Division 3, and in Division 2, Lapan beat top-ranked Mozanie 7-3. to three. So three first-time winners. We'll have a first-time winner here. Bouncer to second, Brooklyn Danielson bubbles late. Second straight inning. Then an error on the second baseman. S Smith trying to settle down her double play partner. Danielson having trouble again. He didn't appear to be a well, She backed up on him. Yeah, say, they say play the ball, don't let the ball play you. And could have charged in the ball. She backed up on it and her second straight error in as many innings. So the Milton offense gets a leadoff runner. Here's Trinity Harris. Looking to bunt. Popped it up. Caught. Lauren Jean Blank is charging in from first, and she catches the foul, the pop-up of the bunt. One out. Here comes Lyndon right Briggs, fielder, the right fielder. Honorable mention all-conference. Going to play softball at UW Oshkosh. First pitch from Stralo is high for ball one. Partner for the Division Three game. Sydney Supple will be happy about the, this girl going to her alma mater. Right. Bunt will go to first. And she kept her foot in the bag to Danielson, so that retires Briggs. Sacrifice successful. Mesra goes to second. Strillo does a good job fielding her position. She bounces off the mound, makes sure to get one. Didn't even think about throwing to second. Danielson had to stretch a little bit to get it, but did so successfully. So two down, Mesra at second. Here's the Milton pitcher, Gwen Baker. 293, her average on the year. With 15 runs batted in. He went one for one last night against Kakana. Been a couple hits against New Richmond on opening night of the tournament. Unanimous first team all conference selections, Gwen Baker. Two and all the count to her. With two outs here in the second inning. Division one championship. Swing and a miss, two and one. Milton's won 14 straight games. They're playing their best ball at the right time of year. Top of the order on deck, Kylie Reed, hoping to get a chance to hit here in the second. Good take there by Baker. And now the count's three and one. Hi, coach. 
<laughs> Ball four. Near miss for Stralo. And it's a walk. Two on, two out. Second straight inning. Milton's had multiple base runners. They're looking for a clutch two out hit here from Kylie Reed. This was very, very close. I'll tell you, Baker, well, Baker's a pitcher, so she has a pretty good idea of the strike zone. And because she's a pitcher, she's going to get a courtesy runner, too. Somebody who's about six, eight, ten inches shorter than <laughs> yeah, right. Courtesy runner at first See who that is? Glenn Baker, number five, Olivia Shoots. Olivia shoots number five for Milton. She is a junior. Plays some shortstop for the Red Hawks. And she's nine inches shorter than Glenn Baker. They will not be confused. No. Hot shot, foul. Just outside the first base bag. So shoots runs for Baker at first. Sophie Mesra, who led off, led off the inning reaching in an error, stays at second. And Kylie Reed. Hopes to knock one or both of them home with a hit here to give Milton the early advantage. Strelo wants a new softball. Reads a 389 hitter. Only four extra base hits all year over 28 hits. She's knocked in eight runs. One strike pitch. Hit up the middle. That's the short. Morgan Smith throwing. Good stretch by Gene Blank over at first to retire Reed and end the side the for Kenosha Bradford. Have a look at that last play at first. Now a message from your local station. This is your WIAA network station. Sunset at Goodman Diamond in Madison. Boy, is that beautiful. Yeah, Ron McGee and Jess Eichhorst, our producer and director, dialing up the pretty pictures right. here at dusk. We don't miss a beat. Good job. All right. Kenosha Bradford. Well, they sent up the minimum of batters thanks to a line-out double play to end the first. So here's the cleanup hitter, Lauren Jean Blank, starting off the second. And she starts off with a foul ball for strike one. There's the Kenosha Bradford Red Devils getting all the things going. Boy, that padding may not last the game there. I was saying, a little early for the one girl having the rally cap on him. <laughs> well, Gene Black's hit 466 this year, so maybe she's used to seeing her do some special things. Has 14 doubles, five triples, four homers, and 25 RBIs, so she has done some special things. Wow. Single on RBI in the quarterfinal win against Cedarburg. She's first team all Southeast Conference. Southeast Conference player of the year, and she has a base hit to right. Oh, all that pounding on the padding helped. That was a nice swing. It goes the other way. That ball had some juice as it went over Reed's head. And I thought it was going to split the outfielders and go to the wall, but it didn't. Nonetheless, lead off person's on for the second Danielson. straight inning for Kenosha Bradford. Here comes second baseman Brooklyn Danielson. Yeah, that outfield got awfully wet in that rain this afternoon. Had to watch out for the ball skidding and you slipping to go get it, but uh, conditions are pretty close to ideal now as things have dried out a little bit. A little sun came out later in the afternoon. So. Danielson showed bunt there and then pulled the bat back and tried to poke it to right again. Hit the bat. That's going to be a foul. So quickly, 0 and 2. Brooklyn Danielson's here at the plate. She's only bunted successfully once all year. This is a team that doesn't do that a lot. Only had 21 sacrifice hits in 29 games. The 0 2. This is bounced to the left side. Shortstop Sophia Mezra throws safe. So Danielson flies down the line and beats the throw first and second for Bradford. Nobody out. I feel good about that after two errors to start the game. She reaches here. Nice play by Mesra. Goes to the backhand, but it's a long throw. And Danielson beats it by a half step. Close, but the right call. Well, yeah. That's close. 
Yep. And you watch it in real time. That's a that's a real tough decision, but I think they got it right. Let's see what Mona Duckworth Torres wants to do. She flashed bunt a little bit. You figure if they're bunted with run around first and nobody out. First and second, nobody out. Get two in the scoring position if you're successful. Milton had the wheel play on in the first pitch. And that's just off the glove of the catcher, so that's going to move the runners up without the sacrifice to second and third. Very similar to the first inning when a pitch high and away bounded off the glove of Marquardt, and the runners move up. Again, pitch up and out of the zone, but Marquardt got a glove on it and couldn't hold on. So now the infield comes in. Again, as you alluded to, both coaches must think this is going to be a low-scoring game. That's a beautiful pitch right in the corner, strike one. If she does hit it, she's not going to do much with it. Great location. Mona Duckworth Torres, 233 in the air, seven runs batted in. It doesn't have an extra base hit. She'd take a single right now. That's a hot shot off the glove of the first baseman, Noble. One run is in, and Kenosha Bradford's on the board as Gene Blank scores. Basically, she put the ball in play, had enough juice on it to see the ball bounce off the glove of Noble, and three straight hits have given Kenosha Bradford the early lead. She's hit pretty well. Tough chance to be sure. Designated player, Madeline Oh, my, they call that an error. Tough one. So no RBI. Well, we'll double check that. I'll wait for the official scoring to catch up here. In the meanwhile, in the meantime, Maddie Stralo's up the designated player for Kenosha Bradford. So they're they're gonna give her an RBI. Still waiting, and, and it was officially an error. Officially an error, but they do give her the RBI. One nothing, Kenosha Bradford. And now the runner from first, Duckworth Torres, will get a free base. He trots down to second base. Nobody was covering it. Second by design. They had no intention of throwing through. So again, second and third with nobody out. And again, the infield in tight. The left-headed hitting Maddie Stralo. Tries to walk up and slap it, but lets it go by for a strike call. Stralo, just a 193 hitter. Has one extra base hit over 16 this year. It's knocked in five runs. Do you dare try a squeeze bumper? I don't think Milton's thought about that option. Oh, yeah. The corners are certainly thinking it. There's the look. And fouled off. So now two and two. You'd think that would eliminate that bunt, but you never know. Tried one more time. Manny Strella, ninth grader. Look at Strelo's. Right foot is nearly out of the batter's box when she starts. She tried to slap it to the left side, but fouled it, so two and two remains the count. Stralo trying to battle against Gwen Baker. This is Kenosha Bradford's sixth trip to the state softball tournament. Their first since 2019. They were runners-up in 2013, made the semis in 2011. And swinging strike three. Down goes Stralo for the first out. The first strike out of the night, and it was much needed. Kenosha Bradford also has a state appearance as a member of the co-op team with Kenosha Ruther back in 2019. There's strike three on Stralo. All right, next up for Kenosha Bradford is Kylie Lanhard. Again, still two runners in scoring position with only one out. There's the bunt, and it's fine. That was a suicide squeeze. Runner was coming down the line from third. Hard. But Lanhart, another freshman, followed off. Now they're a home plate umpire tonight. It's Thomas Hack from Wausau. At first base is Don Baumgart from Kimberly and Todd Jans from Lake Mills. One strike pitch. There's the bluff bunt, then a swing, a late one at that, and it's 0-2. See, Lanhart hasn't driven in many runs this year. 
two of her 10 hits have gone for extra bases. Baker looking for another strikeout. And nearly got it. An anxious moment by Lanhart as she was just <laughs> waiting for the umpire not to say anything. I was going to say her body <laughs> language indicated that perhaps she thought that was strike three. <laughs> but she gets another chance here. Now it's one and two. The short good pick there by Mezra coming home. Save. Well, they tried to get Danielson at the plate, but she avoided the tag. And a second run scores for Kenosha Bradford to make it 2 nothing. Good base running by Lanard. It goes all the way to second in the confusion. Mesro looked like he had trouble getting the ball out of her glove. And that double or that hitch caused the throw to be a bit tardy. No slide, but Danielson gets in there. Obviously, you had to make the tag, not a force play at the plate. So 2 nothing Red Devils. Oh, it's just stunning to see Gwen Baker pitching, and then you see a two for the other team. Doesn't happen very often. Morgan Smith up. She's going to bunt. Little hesitation by Baker. She'll throw to first, but the sacrifice scores Duckworth Torres. 3 nothing, Bradford. Yeah, that was a squeeze, and that time Morgan Smith got the bunt down. Oh, so many expressive faces. Look at the eyes. Wow. Focus. When she gets the bunt down. Hit Baker you. has no other play All except the low. first. The runner coming. Baker probably made the right choice. You see the catcher, Marquardt, instructed her battery mate to throw the first. And it's three zip. <laughs> yeah. It's a bell ringer here, Goodman Diamond. Boy, a big three run inning so far for Kenosha Bradford. Now there's two outs. Landhart's the runner at third. And we're at the top of the order, second time through, starting with Aubrey Stralo. This is hit the center. Benash can't get there, base hit. In comes Lanhart. RBI single, Aubrey Strelo. 4 nothing. Bradford. Big two-out hit by Strelo. Boy, that ball just never got to Benash in center. He's looped it in the center. Really, Benash is no chance at that ball third hit of the inning and we'll get a courtesy runner for the pitcher who picks up the two out rbi okay this is number 15 robin lowen he's a junior running at first for stralo the pitcher celia may up Foul. Kenosha Bradford's won their last five in a row. Her last loss was to Kakana, 8 0. No hit that night by Carly Meredith, the two time Gatorade Player of the Year from Kakana. A long inning for Milton. That was Baker's 25th pitch of this frame. Four are in. Gwen Baker is not used to this. The 0-2 to Celia May. Check swing foul. Will it stay in play? Not quite. Celia May had an RBI double in the quarterfinal win against Cedarburg. She's going to play college softball at MATC. Second team all-conference for Celia May. Started every game in center field for Bradford this year. Dependable player. She can hit a little two, 358 on the year. Took something off it and missed one and two. Well, Milton had a, such an emotional win last night over Kokani. I always wonder the next day uh, what it's going to be like. If you can keep that momentum going. So far, it hasn't happened. There's strike three in the corner. In the That'll do it for the second. inning. But what an inning for Kenosha Bradford as they score four. Now we're from our local stations. This is your WIAA Network Station.
It's the moon over Madison. Oh, we've got a good camera to get the craters like that. Man. Yeah, very nice shot, guys. Oh, a little crescent. I wonder what phase that is. <laughs> um, uh, give us crescent or something. Yeah. He would hang around <laughs> weather friends yeah. from their TV yeah, days. Great, so. Oh, there's Gwen Baker taking a drink. Boy. Wonder what's going through her mind. Down 4 nothing. Here's Milton trying to do something about it offensively against Aubrey Stralo, who says, thank you very much. We're up by four. You know, she Bradford hasn't given up a run in 16 tournament innings here this weekend at Goodman Diamond, including two tonight. Ella Noble in there for Milton to start off the third. Bounced. Foul ball. Stralo hasn't given up a hit. And a couple base runners thanks to errors and a walk. A couple of other state championships were determined today. The first ever lacrosse titles. Girls went to Kettle Marine Badger 17-15 over University School of Milwaukee. Next pitch is hit to first. That is a fair ball, and it'll be Gene Blank taking it unassisted for the first out. The boys lacrosse winner was Middleton 7-6 over Nina. And just down the street at Nielsen Tennis Stadium, boys team tennis winners, Look Division I, Brookfield Kenzie Central, Marquardt. Division II, Brookfield Academy. Here's Kenzie Marquardt. Walked her first time up. Milton looking for its first hit of the night. Marquardt, strike one. Fisted foul, first base side, quickly 0-2. Well, they thought they had something going in the first inning. When Noble reached out an air and then Marquardt walked, but Strelo recorded a, her second strikeout of the night against Beatash and then got Molly Baker, or Gwen Baker, to, excuse me, Molly Baker got the first time to ground out the short. Here comes the 0-2 to Kenzie Marquardt. Just off the outside edge. Strelo wanted it, held the pose, didn't get it. Let's see if Marquardt can take advantage of that opportunity. Staying alive in this at bat. Here's the one two. That one did catch the corner, strike three. Down goes Marquardt, two outs in the third. Pitcher's pitch here. Strelo shoots the corner. And that's a tough pitch to hit if yeah. you're Mark Ward. Jenna Beanash is next. Milton has had three, make it four base runners. Two on errors, two on walks. They had two runners on in each of the first two innings. This one's pulled foul outside third base. Granted them both. So they had early chances. But it was Kenosha Bradford, which grabbed the lead with their four-run second. Milton is a city in Rock County, in south central Wisconsin, about a 40, 45-minute drive south and a little east of Madison. Just off I-90 going to Janesville. And you're saying tonight is a lot fewer people in Milton than there usually is I'll on a Saturday you, night. There were so many cars in the parking lot over in Lot 60 over there, and they were all, well, most of them were in Milton Red Hawk shirts. Great support for yeah. softball team looking for their first ever state title. And last night against Kakana, they cheered every pitch. Every pitch. Jenna Beanash, three and one the count to her. Trying to get something started for the Red Hawks. Foul. Three and two. Of course, Kedosh is located in the southeast corner of the state, right along the shores of Lake Michigan. Did you know that Kenosha had an NFL franchise in 1924? I did not. They were called the Kenosha Maroons, and they folded after four games. But they were in the NFL for a moment. Ball four, a little low. 
So Benash does get on base with two out. Molly Baker up next. The fielder, Molly Baker. Stray low. A little floater that Baker bid on for a strike. Molly's a 10th grader. One of four sophomores on this team. Well, she's got her baffled with the off speed stuff. Pretty balanced roster. Five seniors, four juniors. Four sophomores and a couple, make it three freshmen. And strike three just froze Baker and she watched it go by. A couple of strikeouts in the inning for Stralo. Still nothing doing offensively for Milton. Four nothing Bradford. Now we're from our local station. This is your WIA network station. The 2024 WIAA softball championships are brought to you by the Wisconsin Education Association Council. We act thanks all public school educators giving their all this school year. We act. We teach. We inspire. Wow. Now we're getting artsy. We're going after awards tonight. Great camera shot of the state capitol. Here's Angela Parker leading off for Kenosha Bradford. Bottom of the third inning. Red Devils got four in the second to lead. Up the middle, base hit. Parker slaps at the center. Fifth hit for Kenosha Bradford, and we're only in the third inning. Again, Gwen Baker's earned run average. Of course, there, there's an earned runner, an unearned runner, two mixed in there, but 0.57. 72 hits in 148 innings, and Kenosha Bradford already has five. You had some healthy cuts first against her, too. For the Bradford catcher, Angela Parker at first base, number 19. This is Jasmine Granados running Granados, for Angela Parker. Granados running for Parker. Now batting, first base Here's Lauren Jean Blank, the first baseman. She got that big four-run second inning started with a single. Eventually came around to score. And looks at strike one from Gwen Baker. Talk about Kenosha football. The Heisman Trophy winner is from Kenosha. Alan Amici. That's from that's right. He played at Kenosha Bradford the first year of the school. I did not know that. Yeah, another strike. And then came Melvin Gordon. I didn't know that. Played at the University of Wisconsin. Ran for a million yards. <laughs> what a decent NFL career. Right. In the air to right. Long run for Briggs. Now she stops and retreats a couple steps, makes the catch. Now you got to get used to the lighting here as we transition from twilight to sunset to darkness. And Briggs ended up reading it well and retiring Gene Blank on the fly ball. Brooklyn Danielson steps in for Kenosha Bradford. Oh, what a luxury they have with those two great pitchers. Danielson and Stralo. To short. Mesra, tough play. Got her. Good pick at first by Ellen Noble, and then they retire Danielson on a beautiful play on both ends. A little surprised she didn't go for the force. In second. Two hopper. Of course, she had to yeah. go in the hole and... Once she got the out at first, just barely. Half step. Throw a little low, dug out by Noble. Bona Duckworth Torres reached on an air, scored her first time up. Kenosha Bradford had that line moving in the second. Eight came to the plate. Four scored. Strike. Evens the count at one and one. Renato's dancing around out there at second. 
got Reed's attention. The second baseman went over after that pitch and tried to keep her close. Check swing will cost Duckworth Torres. That's a strike, and it's one and two. Gwen Baker threw a perfect game against Watertown early in May. That was her fourth perfect game of her career. That was and a she, perfect pitch. Yeah, it's a perfect pitch for the strikeout. So, a runner for Bradford, but no runs. We go and a network sponsor. This is your WIA network station. What a pleasant evening. Especially if you're sitting on the Kenosha Bradford side. There's some of the Milton supporters. Right. Hang out of those signs. We want to keep those forever. Bring them to the reunion in a couple, <laughs> a couple years, 25 years. <laughs> Tell everybody how good you were back then. <laughs> That's what reunions are for. Here's Sophie Mesra, the Milton shortstop. It's Mesra, Harrison, Briggs. Six, seven, and eight in the order. And 2-0 the count. Milton's got to get sparked in their offense. They've stranded five runners through three innings, so they've had some traffic. They just lack for a two-out hit. Well, they'd love to get that big crowd going, too. Yeah. Mesra swings it 2-0, and, oh, and she's going to bloop one into right for a hit. So that's the first hit of the night for the Red Hawks offense. Didn't hit it hard, but hit it in the right spot. Goes the other way and muscles into right field. Just over the second baseman's head. It found some green. Be a line drive in the box score tonight. Here's Trinity Harris, designated player. Show blunt. Trinity's a 204 hitter. Emlyn kind of bounced off the leg of Stralo and sailed high for a ball. So it's 2 0. Stralo's walked three, struck out three. That one hit the top of the zone for a strike, 2 and 1. It's seven games on Thursday, seven games on Friday, and the five championship games today. Only one, the weather delay, that was this afternoon. And fouled at the plate, so the runner, Mesra, will return to first. And the count goes two and two to the hitter, Trinity Harris. Strike three, swinging. Down goes Harris for the first out of the fourth. Five strikeouts now for Sprito. Right fielder, Lyndon Briggs. And the right fielder, Lyndon Briggs, comes to the plate. Sprito, a fan 12 in the 4 nothing four-hit shutout against Cedarburg. And I believe that hit the batter. Well, the umpire is saying foul. No, now he says hit by pitch. Okay. So let's see where that hit Lyndon Briggs. He could tell you <sighs> in the hand because it hurts. That was really close to the knob of the bat, no. which would have been a foul. But, yeah. <laughs> I guess that tells you <laughs> yeah. where it hit her. Or she's the greatest actor in the world, one of the two. Okay, so... A base hit. Well, they're actually going to confirm, oh, yeah, okay. double check that it did hit her hand. I mean, it was a close call. There's no replay here, so. Yep, so they're going to say hit by pitch. Yeah. But the plate umpire asked for help from the first base umpire. Look at that. Huh? She's got to suck in her little pinky to so get some feeling back in it. That would smart if the ball hit you there against the bat. 
So third time in four innings, Milton's had two on. They're lacking for a big hit. And, and Baker might just be the player to do it. She is. She looks a little angry, actually. Focused. Maybe a little mad. Down four. Looks at a strike. One and one. Milton got their first hit here in the fourth inning. Trying to get back in this Division I championship. Strike outside corner. Parker, nice job bringing it back into the zone for the catcher for Kenosha Bradford. And Baker liked that pitch when she's in the circle. Oh, she was crazy about the call as a hitter. Chopped foul. Runners will go back to first and second. Counts one and two. One down here in the top of the fourth. Kurt Mussey hoping his team can find a way. They found a way last night late. High for ball two. It's not late quite yet. He's not that late. But you don't want too many of these opportunities to go by, and they've had plenty. Like you said, they need to get the crowd in the game, get the bench alive. That one missed. Three and two. Top of the order coming up with Kylie Reed on deck. Boy, this feels like a pretty big pitch in this game. Only one out. Hit foul. Hit sharply, but well outside the right field line. A little tardy on that swing. So another 3-2 pitch is coming to Gwen Baker. Baker takes a walk after about every pitch. The new MLB rules, you don't see too much of this. <laughs> That's right. But she definitely goes out, does everything except adjust her batting gloves. And Here we go. Ball four. Walk to the bases are loaded. This was close. Here it is again. And it's outside. Yeah, the zone. that's right. You know, and after Baker was walking around, see how quickly Stralo came to the plate with the pitch? Didn't want to give her a chance to settle. Yeah. Didn't work out, though, for the Kenosha Bradford pitcher. A walk and a hit batsman along with a single here in the fourth prompts a mound visit from John Ruffalo. We show much traffic. They've had on the bases. Milton leadoff hitter up for the third time in four innings. Olivia shoots running again for Baker at first for Milton. Well, you're not going to get a much better chance than this. Bases loaded, one out. Leadoff hitter Kylie Reed up. Looks at a strike. Reed bounced to short with two on and two out in the second inning. There's Angela Parker, the catcher. She's going to do everything she can to. Keep a ball in the dirt in front of her and prevent a run from scoring. This is back to the circle. Throw to home. Force there. So they get the runner at the plate, Trinity Harris. And that's a big second out. Strelo showing some athleticism here, the way she bounces off the mound and makes the flip to her, her battery mate to get the fours. Now, we've seen a couple of those kind of throws unsuccessful where sometimes they overhand it and throw it so darn hard you can't catch it but that's well done not only by Stralo but also by Parker two down to Ella Noble and now this Milton opportunity is on the shoulders of Ella Noble with two out hot shot to short stopped by Smith but you'll have to eat it and Milton is on the board RBI hit for Ella Noble. 
Smith did a good job of keeping the ball from going through and probably saving a run. But she had no play after the dive at short. And the run scoring infield single gets a much needed run for Milton. Nice play by the Smith to keep the ball from going to the outfield. So Mesra scores, and it's 4 1. But Milton would love to add on here with Kenzie Marquardt at the plate. 21 runs batted in for the Milton catcher. Hit hard, but foul. Whew. The Kenosha Bradford crowd was holding its breath, but she hooked it foul. We've had a couple of home runs this week, including a grand slam over the fence. Now the Milton fans are having a little something to cheer about. Bases loaded. One and one. Two out. The pitch to Marquardt. This did foul. Came in on her fist. Take a deep breath. Don't let two on. The first didn't score. You can see she's hit. Hit a lot this season. Now's the time for Kenzie Marquardt. Fouled off the end of the bat. First baseman Gene Blank makes the play unassisted. And Kenosha Bradford wiggles out of it with only one run scoring. 4-1 Bradford. Now a word from our statewide sponsors. This is your WIAA Network Station. Here's Gwen Baker. She and the Milton Red Hawks. Trailing Kenosha Bradford 4-1 in our Division One Championship game. Nice to see a smile back on Gwen Baker's face. She hasn't had a whole lot to smile about so far. She hasn't seen a whole lot of clutch inning from her teammates. They are now one of six with runners in scoring position. And they've left eight runners on base in the first four innings. Ouch. That's where they're behind 4-1. There's Maddie Stralo. She'll lead off for Kenosha Bradford in the bottom of the fourth. Kenosha Bradford, the number two seed in Division One, Milton, number four. Stralo swings through that one. It's two and a one. Stralo, Kylie Landhart, Morgan Smith, bottom third of the order, scheduled for Kenosha Bradford here in the fourth. Slaps that one foul. Kenosha Bradford started the season in Florida with a couple of games, beating schools from New York. So you go to Florida to play New York teams. In the spring you do <laughs> when you're in Wisconsin. That's right. And strike three. Down goes Maddie Stralo to start the fourth. Another look at the K for Gwen Baker. Well, he just went past the slap hitter. Now, John Ruffle is taking on all covers. He's in his 21st year. He's been around. He knows how to get a team ready, and you got to think he knew he had a good club this year. Yep. Kylie Lanhard, strike one. You know, one thing John Ruffalo is pleased about, the team won the conference. They also won the Southeast Conference Team Sportsmanship Award. And he said that's kind of unique to win that the same year. Yeah. You can hang your head on that, too. The athletic director of him coming out there, huh? Yeah. That's right. I'll tell you what, win the conference title, win the Sportsmanship Award, and win state, that's a good year. That one got away from Baker a little bit, sailed high for a ball. Well, he said we feel battle-tested, and we found a lot of different ways to win games. But can they hold on here and protect a three-run lead halfway through the state championship game? One, two, just outside. They played tournaments in Kikana and Chippewa Falls. 
Well, working on their tan in Florida. <laughs> nice mix of veterans and youth on the Kenosha Bradford roster. That one's fouled at the plate. Four seniors, five juniors, a sophomore, and five freshmen on John Ruffalo's Kenosha Bradford Red Devils roster. Right, Landhart trying to get something going for the Red Devils offense here. In inning number four. Waited on that one. Put it in the air, and it's going to fall for a hit in front of a diving Lyndon Briggs. Well, that worked out for Landhart as she waited on the pitch. Didn't get all the power she could behind it, but got just enough to get it over the head of the second baseman, Kylie Reed. Yeah. Off-speed delivery, and like you said, she waited back on it. Must seem to stamp in the air a long time, but bloops in, in front of Briggs. I'm not sure Briggs got the best jump on that ball. Right. He had to be concerned with Reed going out from second base, too, and they didn't collide. But it was, the result is a hit for Leonard. Yep, that's the bottom line. Here's Morgan Smith. Looked at strike one right down the middle. Morgan Smith has started every game at shortstop this year. She had a triple in the quarterfinal win against Cedarburg. She's two for three in that game. We call her the anchor of the defense from that shortstop position. She showed she can execute a squeeze play in the four-run second when she brought in a run. One of the four Kenosha Bradford runs in that second inning. Foul. I want to give a hats off to our Rush Media production crew. We get her early in the morning for an 8 o'clock game. They're here well before the rest of us announcers are here. 5 a.m. I heard was crew call this morning for most of them. And here we are, what, 9.30 at night. They're still going. They did all five games today and made them look great. So thanks for your efforts, everyone. This is the center. That's going to fall for another hit in front of Ben Ash. Venish couldn't quite get a great read on that one either, and it fell for a hit. So first and second for Kenosha Bradford, one out. Smith shows she can handle the bat. Lines this one up the middle. Finds some green in front of the center fielder, Venish. And Bradford's got something going with one out in the fourth. Top of the order, Aubrey Strelo. Pitcher. We talked about it all week. You watch enough baseball, you watch enough softball, you know third time through the order can be pretty tough sometimes. Gravel the short, looked at second, and then safe at first. Mesra thought about going for the force at second, but then Stralo beat the throw at first by the time Mesra got it there. The ball's well hit, right at her. But again, she shows indecision, doesn't know whether to go to second for the force or to first, and by the time she makes up her mind, the leadoff hitter, Strelo, beat it out. So the bases are loaded. There's Robin Lowen, the runner for Strelo at first. That's a move that was made all night long. That's the third hit of the night for Aubrey Strelo, by the way. Now here's Celia May. Whoa. Big trouble for Milton here with May, a productive hitter, at the plate with the bases loaded and only one out. And they're looking to break open the game right here. The heart of their order coming up, the bases loaded. That missed. Where Milton had all of their opportunities and they could only come up with run, a run. And also Bradford, let's see what this opportunity brings. Strike. Evening the counter one and one. The focus is back on Gwen Baker's face. No smiling now. That missed high, two and one. For the record, they call that a fielder's choice. Fielder's oh, okay. Credit gotcha. Him. Makes sense. In any case, the bases are loaded. 
Hot shot, base hit, center field. One run is in. Here comes a second. And Kenosha Bradford converts. They're going to end up with runners at second and third and only one out. Celia May delivers. Big hit for May. Shoots this up the middle. And then there's some indecision on which base to throw to. It's shoots by Baker. Pass the second baseman, Reed. Phoenix throws it in, but... <laughs> Let's keep it rolling. Noble cut the ball off, and then with nobody covering first, that enabled May to go to second. That was Lanhart and Smith scoring the runs for Kenosha Bradford. Oh, the Red Devils are all fired up. Two are in in the inning. It's a 6-1 Kenosha Bradford lead. Meanwhile, Coach Mussey trying to settle his troops down. And the Red Devil, well, he's always got a smile on his face, no matter what the score is, I guess. And a little air guitar. The fans are pretty loose, and why not? The catcher, Angela Parker. <laughs> Here's Angela Parker, the catcher. Lined into a double play and singled, so she's hit the ball hard a couple of times. And there's still only one out. This is a foul into the Milton cheering section down the right field side. Angela Parker gives Bradford some power in that lineup. Five homers, 27 RBIs coming into the tournament. A little late swing, and it's fouled back again. So 0-2 the count to Angela Parker. Lauren Jean Blank is on deck for the Red Devils. Second and third, one out here. Two runs in in the fourth. Just missed the bottom of the zone. Ball one. Again, here's the 25th pitch of the inning. And you gotta wonder if that 12 inning outing on Thursday might have taken something out of Baker. She struck out 18, set a division on record in that game, but that's a lot of innings to throw in three days. 12 on the emotional win over Kakano last night, now coming back. There's a lot of eight hits in three and a third innings here tonight. 2-2 two, two coming. This is hit to the right side. Can Briggs get it? Yes, she can in foul territory. Tagging and scoring. So it's going to be a sack fly for Parker as Lowen comes in to score. And it's 7-1, Bradford. So even when they make outs, they're scoring runs. I'm sure Briggs is going to be outs or kind of nonchalant. I think that's Kent right. Makes the catch in foul territory. Both runners are going to move up anyway. But. So Lowen scores. May goes from second to third. She's there with two out. Lauren Jean Blank steps in. And the celebration continues in the Bradford dugout. Man, they'll sleep well tonight. They put in a lot of energy. And they're not even playing most of them. One strike to Gene Blank. Two strikes to Gene Blank. Body language not great for Milton right now. Scoreboard's not great for Milton right now. <laughs> That's true, too. Well, good look there from Jean Blank because she thought about going after the high hard one but didn't. You know, before the game started, I wonder if Bradford thought, boy, if we can get seven against Gwen Baker. <laughs> I think John Ruffalo would have said, I'll take it. Yeah, right? Strike three, outside corner. Fourth inning finally over. Another big one for Kenosha Bradford. Three runs in the bottom of the fourth. Now a message from your local station. This is your WIAA Network Station. Your home improvement needs. 
Square, the state capital of Wisconsin, Madison, the home of the WI State Softball Tournament, 2002. Minus one year for COVID. Here comes Milton. We're in the top of the fifth. They got some work to do. First pitch swinging is Jenna Benash. And it's a foul for strike one. Again, that Milton group trying to find something to cheer about. They did push a run across in the fourth inning. And that's the first hit allowed by Bradford in the tournament. Mm. But it could have been more. Milton has squandered some scoring chances. There's a base hit. Good start to the fifth for Beanish and Milton. Only the third hit of the night for the Red Hawks. There's a big group of Milton Molly fans. Baker. Molly, Baker. Molly Baker's up next. The fourth inning out of five that the leadoff person has been aboard. All right, take that back. It's the third inning out of okay. But nonetheless, been a lot of traffic. Yes, there has. Molly Baker is honorable mention all conference in the Badger Large. A number of Milton Redhawks getting postseason honors this year, as you would expect. Baker tonight, ground out to short and a strikeout looking. And he looks at that pitch down quickly, 0 and 2. Another ball, one and two on this at bat. Aubrey Stralo tonight so far, four innings pitched. Those three hits, one run earned, has walked four, struck out five. This is hit to third. They'll go to second for one, but the throw's bounced by Duckworth Torres, goes into center. So the runner, Benash, will make it all the way to third, and Molly Baker stays at first. Got a break there. But again, we've been base runners. Now Milton needs some clutch hits. It's the third error on Bradford. That went on the throw from the third baseman. He had time. Yeah. It's a bad throw. Yeah. Handcuffed Strelo at yeah. second. Danielson got there just a tad later than you'd like to get that throw at second. But uh, again, Duckworth. Couldn't convert it. Okay, now here we go as we have Sophie Mesra, the shortstop, in. Singled and scored the Milton run her last time up. See the big Milton crowd trying to get into it. Stralo gets the sign, checks the wristband. Bunt! They'll go to first. Run will score. That's Beanash touching home, and it's a 7-2 game. Well, it's one way to get a run in. Yeah. But I think if you're Kenosha, you'll yeah. be happy to take the out and give up the run yep. at this stage of the game. Well, Nicely executed at the yeah. squeeze, though. Yeah, no, well executed in the field as well by Kenosha Bradford. Yeah, so 7-2, but now you have one out and one on. And Trinity Harris steps in. Harris 0 for 2 with a strikeout. That one's foul. Look out on the on deck circle. One and one the count. Lyndon Briggs on deck. This one's off the end of the bat foul. Let's talk about Milton's big win against Kokona last night. And 
before the tournament, Kurt Mussey said, hey, we would look forward to an opportunity to play Kokona. And they got that opportunity and succeeded. Now they're trying to rally again in the championship game, but that's not going to help. Strike three, swinging. Harris goes down, two out. And again, Milton, the first team to beat Kikana since May of 2021. A span of right fielder, 100, and, no, nine games and 108 game winning streak snap. Lyndon Briggs, the right fielder. This is to right field, and Ella Crotter can't catch up with it. It's going to score another run for Milton as Molly Baker comes home. Here comes Briggs sliding into third with an RBI triple. Now the Red Hawks aren't dead yet again. That's the clutch hit they've been waiting for. Briggs goes the other way, gets the ball over the right fielder's head. It kept carrying. The wind's not a factor. But the ball just kept carrying on on the right fielder and all of a sudden it's a 7-3 that finally put up a crooked number on the board two are in and more importantly get a clutch hit They're now two of seven or two of eight with runners in scoring position quick discussion in the circle for the kenosha bradford team here comes gwen baker Pitcher, gwen with briggs baker. at third Baker tonight has walked twice. She gets an RBI here. We got something going. Seven three the score. Two and zero. Oh. Strelo hit her leg again as she delivered. So. Might have thrown the alignment off just a little bit. In any case, it's a 2-0 count to Baker. Then top of the order is next with Kylie Reed. Looks at a strike. Last night, Strelo came in to throw the last two innings after Brooklyn Danielson went the first five. You wonder if those rules might be reversed tonight. And again, the luxury of having two great pitchers like Stralo and Ann Danielson. They've used them effectively all year. That one caught the inside edge for a strike. Two and two. Two in in the inning. Two and two the count. Two outs. Here it comes to Gwen Baker. Strike three looking. Down goes Baker, down goes Milton. So a couple runs for Milton in the inning, but they still trail by four thanks to this strikeout to end it. Now a message from our statewide sponsors. This is your WIAA Network Station. Well, Milton crawls back into it a little bit with a couple of runs in the top of the fifth. It's 7-3 now. Kenosha Bradford as the Red Devils come to hit in inning number five. Here comes five, six, and seven in the order. Brooklyn Danielson, Mona Duckworth-Torres, and Maddie Stralo. First pitch to Danielson rides inside, ball one. Baker needs to put up a zero. Give her a team a yeah. chance in the last two innings to come up with four runs. Brooklyn Danielson verbally committed to Eastern Illinois to play college. First team all Southeast Conference. Southeast Conference pitcher of the year for the second straight year. Had a 21 strikeout game to open the tournament against South Milwaukee. May 23rd. That was an extra inning affair, of course. Well, I would not be surprised to see her in the circle for the last two innings. Mm -hmm. She had a perfect game against Racine Case in April. And swinging strike three. Down goes Danielson to open the fifth. Five, six strikeouts now for Gwen Baker. 
Again, she followed up her 18 strikeout performance Thursday with just three last night, but eight tonight against Bradford. Mona Duckworth Torres in. One down here in the fifth. And Baker starts her up with a strike. Kenosha Bradford had, had, has had two productive innings. Four runs in the second, three in the fourth. That off-speed pitch just missed, and I think there was some in the Milton dugout that didn't think it did miss. I think including the pitcher. Hmm? Okay. That time it caught the inside corner. And one and two to Duckworth Torres. Quick discussion between John Ruffalo and the batter Mona Duckworth Torres. Nobody on one out here in the Kenosha Bradford fifth. And neither Milton nor Kenosha Bradford has won a WIA state softball championship. Someone will have one within the next hour. Strike three called. Two down. A couple of strikeouts to start the fifth here for Gwen Baker. Designated player, Madeline Stralo. Now the DP, Maddie Stralo. Good look at Baker, who's going to Butler next year and a, a ride. Baker now tonight, four and two-thirds innings. She's allowed eight hits, seven runs, five of which are earned. Hasn't walked a batter, struck out seven. Ball. Now 3 0. Rinkers handled Strelo pretty well. Struck her out previous two bats. But then the batter after that, Kylie Lanhard, the eighth place hitter, has two hits already. And Morgan Smith, the eighth, uh, ninth place batter, has a hit as well. So you have to be careful with every spot up and down this Kenosha Bradford lineup. Strelo trying to get on here with two down in the fifth as a three and one count. Ball four, she pulled the bat back in time. And it's the first walk issued by Baker tonight. And, and I don't think she thought that was ball four. I think you're right. And I think. I think she's looked at each umpire <laughs> since that call. Let's see. Left fielder, Kylie Lennart. That's right there. I think Strillo helps sell that. Yeah, ball. that's right. Tossing the bat away. There's a strike. Batter is now Kylie Lanhart. <laughs> Baker's still upset about the, the ball four call. <laughs> Shaking her head. Talking to her infielders. <laughs> Strike. I was just thinking about time, huh? <laughs> Trying to finish up the fifth. A little high there. I guess he's also a little angry that the runner's not getting back to the base. Oh, get back, Ruben. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's not going to go over well either. <laughs> two and two. You saw her look at the runner at first. <laughs> That's Kylie Lanhart. Strike three, swinging, and look at Baker. 
Enough of this. Look at the emotion from Gwen Baker. Now a message from our statewide sponsors. This is your WIAA Network Station. The 2024 WIAA Softball Championships are brought to you by the Wisconsin DOT. Zero in Wisconsin. Together, we can save lives. Saw a peek at the Monona Terrace and now the state capitol, State Street in Madison. Jay got his drone out. <laughs> Those shots. Great job, Jay. If I was driving that drone, it wouldn't look that steady. I can tell you that. That wasn't State Street. That was the State Street is around the capitol, but that was not State Street. That was uh, off the Monona Terrace there. 7-3. Kenosha Bradford with Milton coming to bat in the six. They're running out of opportunities. They've had plenty of opportunities, but now those opportunities are getting slimmer and slimmer as we start the sixth. Strello still on the hill or in the circle. Top of the order, Kylie Reed. Tough play there for Danielson. And it's going to be safe at first as Reed reaches. Tough chance for Danielson, then she bounced the throw, but Riley, uh, Kylie Reed uh, beat it. Another leadoff person on. That's a tough chance to be sure. Yeah. That's going to be an infield hit. Fifth hit of the game for Milton. First baseman, Ellen Noble. So just what the Red Hawks needed. Here's Ellen Noble, the first baseman. I don't think you can play for just one run anymore if you're Milton with only two innings remaining. No, you got to keep the line moving here with six outs to go. Noble tonight has a hit. She also reached on an error. Good pitch by Stralo to hit the corner. There you see her night and her season. Swinging strike, and that's strike three. Down goes Noble. First out of the inning. Catcher, Kenzie Marquardt. Kenzie Marquardt, the catcher up next. Milton fans on their feet trying to get this offense charged up. That's a strike. McCord 0 for 2 tonight, 2 for 7 in the state tournament. Driven in a run in the, mm -hmm. their stay at Goodman Diamond. Strike 2. Mark Ward steps out of the box, looks down at head coach Kurt Mussey. Stralo's ready with an 0-2 to come with one on and one down here in the top of the sixth. Hot shot past the third baseman, Duckworth Torres in the left. Boy, that was a hard hit ball by Mackenzie Marquard for a single. Other than Briggs' triple, that may be the hardest hit ball of the night. And she turns on this one and... Mm. I think we're going to get a pitching change here. Yeah. Now we talked about the terrific twosome of pitchers for Kenosha Bradford. We're going to see it right here. There's the energy in the Milton crowd after that hit by Mark Ward. Mark Ward trying to <laughs> get the dugout backed <laughs> up and they have a little jump around it oh, yeah. as if the Milton crowd needed any more energy. Is it the end of the third quarter already? Gosh. So, see some, a lot of defensive changes as everybody jumps around okay. wearing a Milton uniform. 107 pitches for Stralo tonight. She goes five and a third. Allows six hits, so far three runs. Struck out six, seven. 
So Brooklyn Danielson takes over in the circle. That's the first batter she'll face. Jenna Beanash for Milton. In this tournament, Danielson won five innings last night. Shut out two hit ball. Walk one struck out four against Watertown. And Strelo came in to get the save on the year. Danielson 12 and 3 with a 143 ERA. This is her 18th game. Sixth out of the bullpen. She's thrown 12 complete games as a starter, including seven shutouts and 86 in the third innings. Danielson's allowed 49 hits and just 18 in runs. She's walked 30, struck out 199. So she is the better strikeout pitcher than Strelo, and that's one of the reasons she got named pitcher of the year in the conference. The line on Strelo so far, five and a third, six hits, three runs, one earned, four walks, eight strikeouts. She's the responsibility of Reed and Marquardt, the runners at first and second for Milton. Okay, Danielson in, and Beanash at the plate. And we need a new second baseman. That's... Well, we'll get her number and get those changes. Foul. Okay, Brooklyn Danielson to the circle. And well, we just told you that, but that's what Danielson's done this year. I mean, that's what got her the pitcher of the year in the conference. And caught the attention of Eastern Illinois. Kylie Butch and the runner at first taking over for Kenzie Marquardt, by the way. So Maddie Strelo is now at second. Danielson's at pitcher. And Aubrey Strelo goes to right field for Crowder. Those are the changes. Danielson, of course, coming over from second base. Looper, diving attempt on and out of the glove of Gene Blank. Everybody's going to be safe. It's going to be bases loaded with only one out. Boy, valiant try by Gene Blank, but when she hit the ground, the ball popped out of her glove. And Milton has yet another great opportunity here in the sixth. Well, as you say, charging first base and makes a great effort. She can't hold the ball. Fielder, Molly Baker. Danielson picks it up and has a play at second base, but she's not aware of it. The runner at first was in a tough spot. She thought the ball was going to be caught, and when it wasn't, she was tardy going to second. So Danielson had a play there, but she held the ball. So now the bases are loaded with one out. And this is the tying oh. run at the plate. Oh, my goodness. Kylie Reed scored. Molly Baker's at the plate. Or check that. I'm sorry. Molly, uh, Kylie Reed's at third. Mark Ward's at second. Benesh at first. Fisted foul. Uh, every pitch so critical here. Division one championship. Bases loaded, one out. There's Molly Baker on the season and tonight. Popped up. Catcher grabs it. Angela Parker in foul territory. Two down. Sophie Mezra up next. The shortstop, Sophie Mezra. All right, Parker got a good read of that right away. Sophie Mezra has a hit. She reached on an air, has scored a run. Drove in one with a sacrifice bunt. High drama at Goodman Diamond. Oh, 
Danielson's pitch. Outside. Oh, Milton needs a clutch hit here. They're just 2 of 11 with runners in scoring position. They've left nine through the first five innings. Have the bases loaded here. The tying run of the plate in the sixth. Measure in the air and it stays barely in play, but the three fielders, Maddie Stralo, Aubrey Stralo, and Warren Jean Blank just couldn't quite get there. One and two, the count. Bases loaded, two out. Earlier today, Pacelli won Division 5, Fall Creek won Division 4, Prescott the winner in Division 3, and Wapong takes Division 2. Division 1 still to be decided. In the air, near the line, Aubrey Stralo makes the catch, and the threat goes by the boards. Now a message from your local station. This is your WIAA Network Station. Sometimes statistics don't lie. Milton has had opportunities, and the numbers show how they haven't taken advantage. Yeah, two glaring, two glaring stats. The 12 left on base over the first six innings, and again they're two of 12 with runners in scoring position. They've just been crying for a clutch hit, and there have been very few. Okay, we start with the number nine hitter on the Kenosha Bradford lineup, Morgan Smith. And quickly, 0-2 to the Kenosha Bradford shortstop. Smith has a sacrifice for an RBI. She also has a single and a run scored. Good night out of the nine hole for Kenosha Bradford. Baker a little wild with that one. Two and one. Top of the order up next with Aubrey Strelo and Celia May scheduled here in Inning number six, one more chance for Milton in the seventh. Well, they had one more chance last night in the seventh and came through big time. Yep, found a, found a way, got three runs. Raced the 3-2 deficit and beat Kakana by three. First time anybody's done that since May of 2021. Is there still magic left in the Red Hawks? We'll find out. First, they have to get through the bottom of the sixth here. 
Oh boy, that thing was about 30 miles an hour by the time it got to the plate. Baker wanted that call, didn't get it. Now Smith wasn't going to be able to pull the trigger on that off speed delivery. Morgan Smith says thanks. Punch, and that's grabbed in foul ground, so no outs, just a foul ball. New life again for Morgan Smith. Count is full, three and two. Last thing Baker wants to do is put the leadoff batter on here in the sixth. And is that fair or foul? Fair ball. That thing hit right off the line. Kind of waiting for the call on whether it was fair or foul, finally. The home plate umpire said fair ball. Now I'll get an explanation to Kurt Messi. A wry smile from Coach Messi as he gets an explanation he doesn't really wish to hear. There's the first base umpire, but. Okay, so it actually it actually bounced in foul territory and then kind of spun back. But it's where the ball is when it goes over the base. Yeah. And it didn't really look to land in fair territory, but fair is the call. Yeah, there you see it's sure looks like it's just to the right side of that right field line. But again, how it goes over the bases will count. Okay, well, in any case. The leadoff batter is on. Tom Hacks, the home plate umpire. I think he made the call, didn't he? Tom, yep. Don yep. I agree. first base umpire. Okay, now top of the order, Aubrey Strelo. And it's fouled out of play. A couple of wacky plays here. Nine <laughs> things uh, interesting. Nine hits now for wow. Bradford. Morgan Smith now two for two out of that nine hole in the Red Devil batting order. Bunt. Good one. And safe at first. Uh oh, now they got the runner caught off second, but she's going to get into third. Wow. Morgan Smith makes it all the way to third. Stralo safe at first. Well, I think Marquardt should be charged with an error here. Yep. There's the bunt. Marquardt. Okay, they'll call it a sacrifice and an error. Yeah, sacrifice E2. Yeah. And then look at that. And good base running by Smith, who kept on going, as you can see. And then they threw behind the runner, and <laughs> the throw to third never occurred. I think if they throw ahead of the runner, they might get it. There's a stolen base for Strelo. Well, Milton couldn't take advantage of its opportunities. You talk about a golden opportunity to put more space for Kenosha Bradford here. Second and third, nobody out. And yeah. Celia May, the big RBI hitter for Kenosha Bradford this week is in. Wide two and one. May had a two-run single in the fourth inning. This one's back to the circle. They go home. Looks like they got the runner caught up between second and third run down. Oh, boy, that's going to be Baker tagging the runner in the face. Well, and now... Another runner hung up, but nobody's covering first. So... Wow, that was an interesting play in the tag there. As Baker got Smith, so the run does not score. It's the best possible outcome for, well, yeah, for Milton. Right. Watch his tag. A little high. Whoa, man. The catcher, Angela Parker. And then Smith was trying to get him to run down. Oh, wow. 
Strail would end up at third, but Strail went back to second. And then a base hit to right. Here comes Stralo rounding third and scoring, and Bradford's lead goes back to 8-3. RBI single for Angela Parker. So after all the merry-go-round of the bases, <laughs> Parker hits the first pitch the other way, past the first baseman, Noble, and they pick up the run, and it's a five-run lead. So Angela Parker, boy, she's hit the ball hard all four times up. Has a couple of hits, a couple of RBIs, a sacrifice fly in there as well, and then lined into a double play that she hit a rocket in the first inning. Here's Lauren Jean Blank as Kenosha Bradford has one on the board so far here in the sixth, only one out. Second and third, the runners. There has been a lot of traffic on the bases tonight in a game we thought would be a pitcher's battle. Instead, we've seen a lot of, lot of base runners. 110 pitches for Gwen Baker tonight. To second, Reed will go to first. Another run will score as May comes home. 9-3, Kenosha Bradford. Gene Blank puts the ball in play. Reed does it, makes a nice play. But it's a run scoring single for Gene Black. Second run of the sixth inning for Kenosha Bradford. Here's Brooklyn Danielson. First pitch swinging to short. Throw across by Mesra gets Danielson, and that will end the sixth, but Kenosha Bradford adds two more. 9-3 as we go to the seventh. Now message from your local station. This is your WIA network station. Well, last night Milton had a three-run rally in the top of the seventh to win. Tonight, they need six to tie. Leading off for the Milton Red Hawks designated player Trinity Harris. Trinity Harris, the designated player leading off. Bottom third of the order scheduled for Milton. Danielson trying to close out a state championship for Kenosha Bradford. Little low, 2-0. Harris, Briggs, Baker, scheduled. Three and all. Danielson has not had a save this year. Again, they've pretty much split pitching duties between her and Strato, starter, and would be the winning pitcher tonight. Well, she goes after the 3-0. This is the play at second by Maddie Stralo to retire Harris, and it's the first out of the seventh. Danielson relieved Aubrey Stralo in the sixth inning. So now two-thirds of an inning of work for Danielson allowed a hit. That's it. Here's Lyndon Briggs, the right fielder. Milton down to their final two outs. Trailing 9-3. Briggs, one of four seniors, playing her last game. Trying to extend it. She's had a big game tonight. Yeah. RBI runs scored. One of five players who were on Milton's 2022 squad when they were freshmen and sophomores, that's Gwen Baker, Lyndon Briggs, Sophie Mesra, 
Ella Noble and Kylie Reed. One more 2024 graduate, Julia Wolf, played in the 2022 team but didn't play this season. Had an ACL tear, suffered in the basketball season. Again, Kurt Mussey says, yeah, we, our heads were kind of spinning. We had wide eyes, and it was a tough, tough deal in 2022, but they felt much more comfortable coming to state this year. Mers had a couple of big wins to get to this championship game, but now Briggs facing a 2-1 count with one out. Now it's 2-2. Jim Moten got here by shutting out Oregon, 7-0 in the sectional final. Now they got to figure out a way to come up with a miracle comeback in the seventh for the second straight day. Strike three, two down. Danielson will have none of that <laughs> comeback talk. Man, they're feeding the pig tonight, aren't they? <laughs> the pitcher, Wayne Baker. Went upstairs and Briggs couldn't get it. Well, Gwen Baker is the last hope for Milton. Such a big part of the Milton softball story. Senior headed to Butler University. What will likely be her final at bat in a Milton Redhawks uniform. She digs in. Parker and Danielson get the sign. Here's the 1-0. Ball two. Bradford avenged one of their three losses of the season last night. Watertown beat them 4-3, to three, but last night when it counted, Bradford won 1-0. Their other loss was to Kikana. 8-0. They also lost to Franklin. 4-0. But now they're two strikes away from moving their record to 28-3 and lifting the gold ball as the state champs. Two and one to Baker. Three and one. Top of the order, Kylie Reed on deck. Will there be another Milton miracle tonight? They've got a big mound to climb down 9-3. Ball four. Third time tonight, Baker has walked. Kylie Reed. Second baseman, Kylie Reed. Milton has had a base runner in every inning tonight. We're waiting for a runner for Baker. It's been shoots most of the night. Looks like it's her again. Courtesy runner for the pitcher, Glenn Baker, at first base number five, Olivia Schutz. Yep, Olivia Schutz again. There you see the crowd, the Kenosha Bradford crowd anticipating this final out. Big swing and a miss by Reed. 389 or average on the season. She just wants to keep the line moving here. One strike to count. Called strike two. Will this be the pitch for Brooklyn Danielson? Strike three for the first time. Kenosha Bradford, Division I State Softball Champions. They practiced that dog pile, but they got a little work to do as they jumped around and then collapsed into one another. But they've never had to do it before, so that's right. But an impressive performance 
They put up crooked numbers in the second, fourth, and sixth inning. Never trailed, and Bradford takes a 9-3 win over Milton, which left 13 runners on base and never came out a comeback against the pitching duo of Danielson, who got the save in Stralo. Here's Danielson, strikeout to end the game, and that is our play of the game. That's our Wisconsin DOT play of the game. Zero in Wisconsin. Together, we can save lives. As Kenosha Bradford ends its season with a state championship and a 28 and 3 record, the Milton Redhawks second place. An impressive 26 and 3 campaign for Kurt Mussey and the Milton Redhawks. And there's the celebration for the Red Devils. We're hoping to talk with Kenosha Bradford head coach John Ruffalo in just a little bit. And we'll have the award ceremony here to wrap up an exciting week and a long, exciting day of championship games here at Goodman Diamond in Madison. 21st season for John Ruffalo as Kenosha Bradford's head coach. As we mentioned the athletic director as well. Maybe he'll give the athletic director a raise for winning the state championship. <laughs> I say, I don't know. He might have to. An incentive clause in his contract. But. <laughs> might, might have to clear that with the uh, board and stuff, but we shall see. Just getting the headsets on John Ruffalo, and let's see if we have John ready to go. John, hi, it's uh, Bill and Jay up in the booth. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Well, the score says 9-3, which would seem like it was a one-sided deal, but boy, you, there was a lot of situations where Milton could have made it a much closer game, but your pitchers got out of trouble thanks to help with some good defense, too. Yeah, I agree, and uh, our pitchers have done that all year. They, mean, they have not buckled when they've been under pressure. They've made pitches, and... Uh, Hats off to Milton, first of all. They came to play. You know, when we got that uh, lead early on, I said to these kids, you, you watched them against Calcana. You know they're not going to quit. You got a seven-inning game to play here, and boy, did that turn out to be true because they, they pretty much got something going. You've been doing uh, this 20, 21 years. What's it like to finally uh, be on the verge of lifting the gold ball? Oh, well, I'm a pretty emotional fellow, and I'm trying not to fall apart at the moment. Uh, just really, really proud. Um, happy for our school. Happy for our kids because um, I know what they put into this and uh you know it's it's a celebration of uh 21 years of this all the coaches all the players uh that have come through this program that have built us to this moment not just this not just this group it's hey make everyone. sure you ask the athletic director for a raise okay <laughs> that's right that's right i think the athletic director is going to let the softball coach uh you know celebrate this one a little bit longer than just this go. go get your trophy john thanks, thanks congratulations guys. thank you all right now to the awards Lyndon Briggs. Ella Noble. Avery Agnew. Molly Baker. Jenna Pena. Morgan Bastion. Sophie Mesra. Gwen Baker. Cameron Zerwinski. Kylie Butcher. Madison Furman. Kenzie Marquardt. Haley Tasso. And Kylie Reed. Will coach Kurt Muzzy. Please come forward to receive the trophy for the runner-up, Milton Redhawks.
each player to come forward as their name is read to receive their individual medal from the 2024 WIAA Division I State Champion, Bradford Red Devils, Tessa Hayden. Brooklyn Danielson. Aubrey Strelo. Madeline Strelo. Morgan Smith. Brianna Parker. Cassidy Fong. Kylie Lenhart. Robin Lowen. Lauren Jean Blank. Jasmine Granados. Angela Parker. Celia May. Ella Crowder. And Mona Duckworth Torres. Will coach John P. Ruffalo please come forward to receive the trophy for the champion, Bradford Red Devils. Final totals of the game, Kenosha Bradford, nine runs, 10 hits, three errors. Milton, three runs, seven hits, and two errors. Well, Brof, we had plenty of our traditional powers come to the state tournament this year, but nice to see some new faces, some new first-time winners. Yeah, it was a day for newbies, really. And we saw it early this morning when a couple old-timers played for the D5 title. Pacelli beat Oakfield 4-3. They won again. Meanwhile, for the first time, Fall Creek's a champion. They win in Division 4, 7 nothing over Cuba City. Prescott wins for the first time in Division 3, beating Laconia 3-1. Wapon, a first-time winner. They beat Mosinee 7-3. And here, Kenosha Bradford wins for the first time in 9-3 over Milton. It's a fun day as always, Jay. You did a good job as yeah. always. See you in Appleton for baseball. Can't wait. Hey, we want to thank, again thank our Mush Rush Media crew, our production folks. Man, the pictures look great, and they have long days, and they are dedicated people who appreciate their efforts. A look at our champions in Divisions 5 through 1. I want to thank all of you for joining us for our coverage of the 2024 WIA State Softball Tournament. Congratulations to the winners and the runners-up. For Bill Brophy, I'm Jay Wilson. Again, thanks for watching, and good night from Madison.